Salwete Omne, Salwete Amiki. I am Decimus Aurelius Inganarius. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Uh, I thought that we might take this opportunity while we have a pause in our usual um, yearly session uh, to do a bit of an introductory guide to the Republic of Rome module of Tabletop Simulator that we use in our Republic of Rome board game broadcast. Uh, so if you are probably watching this video, if you're watching this video, chances are you've either been um, uh, enticed or coerced <laughs> by me to participate in one of the uh, future games uh, that Nova Roma and, and I uh, like to put on of the uh, Valley Games 2009 edition of the Republic of Rome. And as such, we will be using probably the Tabletop Simulator and the subsequent uh, Republic of Rome module uh, that we have started using uh, since 2022. Um, so this will go for maybe about an hour or so. It's designed to step you through all the various pieces and the mechanics of the Tabletop module itself uh, to give you as a, an appreciation as a player so you know uh, how the pieces interact, I guess, with the rules. And uh, this will fall in line with some of the other guides I've done on the game itself. Uh, and together you'll have both the physical mechanics about how to play, but also, I guess, the background rules once you go through the introductory guides uh, in, in the YouTube playlist there on the Australia Nova Romana channel, hopefully, which is where you're probably watching this from in the future. So uh, let's, let's not delay. Let's bring up the module and let's start going through that. So let's... Uh, Go across uh, now. There we go. So here we are. Uh, we are now looking at uh, the module, the Republic of Rome module that we use in our Republic of Rome board game broadcast. Now, uh, I unfortunately can't take credit for the base uh, game here. Um, so uh, as I said, Tabletop Simulator enables you to play a whole bunch of different board games that are out there uh, and download these various modules for free that the community has created. And this particular one has actually been uh, done up by some of, uh, some dedicated people in the Republic of Rome community. And in fact, I think we can bring it up on Steam here in front of us. Yeah, here it is here. So if you're interested in downloading the base module that we uh, have utilized and customized ourselves, uh, this is where you can get it. So you go to Tabletop Simulator on Steam, uh, obviously download uh, Tabletop Simulator and then go to the, the workshop section and uh, and I've actually got the URL uh, to my uh, my virtual left here. So that little URL, if you put that in your uh, browser or in Steam, it'll bring up this this module here. Uh, and thanks to the, uh, the the Dan Real uh, Scott and his team here. So Dan Real, uh, Angelus Novus, and Appius Rufius Carus. Uh, these three gentlemen have put together this fantastic Republic of Rome module. Now what this set, this sets this one apart from all the other four or five other Republic of Rome modules out there that various other parts of the community have created is that this has been quite customised visually. Uh, those that are familiar with the Republic of Rome, the board game is very statistical. There's no real major set pattern about it. There's nothing overly fancy about the layout. It's just a big rectangle full of statistical boards, really. Um, but this particular module, it makes it a little bit feel a little bit more like a centre, a little bit more like a forum. So this is where you can come and download it. So, yep, click on your subscribe button. That'll download the module to Tabletop Simulator for you. For you. Uh, and then you'll be able to uh, open this up and then perhaps host your own games if you're interested. Now, if you're just a player uh, and you're certainly joining our Nova Roma Republic of Rome board game broadcast sessions, you just need the Tabletop Simulator game. Uh, certainly, uh, this module is only for, for myself as a host. But good for the players if you want to continue to interact and get used to the mechanics behind the scenes. Um, regardless whether you're coming as a host or a player, this is a fantastic module for the Republic of Rome uh, and includes um, other customised pieces which we'll go through shortly as well. So if you're using it, give it a thumbs up, give it a subscribe, give it a favourite, uh, give it an award and if you can, uh, thanks to the great work of Dan Real and his team here. So um, if you guys, if you're watching this in the future, thank you so much. Gratias Vorbis Argo. I, I, I really love the work that you guys have done and uh, I've since uh, added to it as well. So what you're seeing on screen now won't look exactly like the module because I've added a few more things to it. Um, and I guess that's the beauty about Tabletop Simulator and the modules is you can borrow bits and pieces that you see from other modules and include them in your own and set it up the way that you like. So um, every, every person's game, I guess, will be a little bit different. But I've kept a lot of the core... Uh, mechanics uh, and the core customized pieces in particular because uh, I just love them so much um, and it's really really added to what is already well, I think is a fantastic game it's one of my favorites uh, who's who's uh, who's saying um, 
Uh, and right, uh, and as Unknown Star, um, one of our uh, diligent players, has said in the chat, for those that uh, can't see it, he says it's much easier than Roll20. And that's certainly right. Uh, certainly uh, for us uh, here in the Nova Roma games, we had used uh, a Roll20 virtual tabletop simulator uh, previous uh, to using this module, which was uh, a little bit clunky, perhaps a little bit more designed for your classic uh, RPG style games. But uh, uh, certainly uh, for this style of game, uh, I tell you what, Tabletop Simulator and this module put together by Dan Reel is just uh, ultimate. Hello to one of our senators, George Tanos, has also just joined us live in, in chat. Uh, uh, it's a, a pleasure to have one of our Nova Roman senators also on live and he's a big supporter of this, of this Twitch channel as well. Um, and so we thank you for his uh, continued support. So that's that's brilliant. Right, so let's get on a little bit further in the guides. As I said, um, there are both uh, some things here you won't see in the module that you download from Dan Real, and there's some things that we've we've added. Um, and subsequently, I, as from the actual game itself, The Republic of Rome by Valley Games, there are some pieces that we have designed and introduced that won't otherwise be in your board game box uh, for those who perhaps have a physical copy. So I, I'm going to go through pretty much most of the pieces here. So you as a new player can uh, gain an appreciation of what all the parts do and then correspond those back to parts and the rules uh, that you would otherwise hopefully be starting to get yourself familiar with. So let's zoom in on the centre at the moment. But I mean, as you can see as a whole, it's set out and laid out very much like a forum. Each of up to six players has their own area, which in this case is colour-coded to make things a little bit easier for us. Uh, and each there's some personalised tokens which we'll talk about um, in the future, which can uh, provide options for the, the style of play that you want to play through. Uh, one of the unique aspects that I like about Tabletop Simulator is the, the card zone, which is actually down the bottom. So if we select a colour ourselves, so we're going to change our colour to, let's say we're going to be the green team. So you can see down here, Tabletop Simulator has now assigned me to the, the green faction in this case. And we can actually take uh, cards, for example, and put them into our hand. So when we drop a card into this zone, it only becomes ours and ours alone. And uh, we can we can have a look at that, <coughs> bring it up, get a closer view. Uh, it's very, very smooth. I, I like, <coughs> excuse me, I very much like what Tabletop Simulator has done. Now, I, I mean, I'm flipping it over here to, to hide it, I guess, from my own view. But when a card is in your hand... Uh, only you can see it. So even I have, though, I've flipped it over here and obviously you're seeing on this recording or the stream right now, you know, we can all physically see it. But if there was another player or other players that are joining me um, and if they had cards, you know, I couldn't see their cards and they couldn't see mine. So in this face-up form like this, it'll just look like a black square to all other players. Uh, so you don't have to worry about other players sneaking or, or having a peek at your card. So provided that they're sitting in your zone, see the little shadow box that appears uh, when you drop a card into that area, uh, no other player can see it. Um, and you'll always be generally carrying cards in your hand in, in the Republic of Rome board game. So uh, some shortcut keys uh, which really help out. Uh, while you're looking around the board, the Alt key is uh, fantastic for zooming in on both cards and tokens and parts of the board that are otherwise able to be zoomed in on. So hovering over something, I can uh, I can zoom in on it. So this is a, a little bit of a help guide. This is actually out of the board game, this particular piece here. Or a card, I can press Alt again and it brings it up and zooms it in. Another way you can uh, magnify the board without having to zoom in with your mouse wheel, which is pretty, pretty simple, I think, compared to some of the other platforms, is to simply using the M key. M for mic uh, brings up like a magnifying glass, which allows you to see things uh, a little bit simpler as well. And that's that's not token or card dependent. Um, you can just simply move your cursor around in the magnified view uh, and get an immediately rapid, quick look depending on where your cursor is sitting. So uh, so navigating is, is really easy in this game. So as I said, mouse wheel to zoom in and out and your WASD keys to move around the field or you can use your arrow keys to rotate your views uh, in terms of tilt as well. Now, if you go around and you're changing your view and you do all sorts of things, but you just want a quick way to get back to the default view, smash that space bar and it'll take you back to your initial view. So, so now you know how to zoom in using Alt or the M key and you know how to move around the field, panning, WASD or tilting around using your arrow keys. <coughs> so that's the basic navigation uh, pretty much down pat. So uh, let's start going through some of the other mechanics and tokens on the board. Uh, we know that dice is a part of this game. The Republic of Rome is a, is a card and dice game. There's, there's probably two ways that you can choose to, to roll dice. And for me, I certainly give the players the option. Is One is physical dice. And as you can see, we've got a few around the board at the moment. 
generally, you know, we give each of the players a single die if they wanted to roll for knights that way. But otherwise, we'd have three dice, physical dice ready, should they choose to use physical dice. Uh, and if players would like to use physical dice, or if you'd like to roll them, um, dragging a box around them, left-clicking and picking them up, and then obviously you want to randomise them, give them a shake like you would in real life, and you see that shaking motion. And then uh, you simply, when you're finished randomizing them is you throw them like you would uh, any other dice you know click drag and release the left click key uh, and that will throw the dice and as you can see there uh, hovering over the dice actually gives us our total for us which is good so very very smart mechanics uh, and you can do the same by um, only using um, say you know one die or, or two dice or something pick it up you know shake your mouse to randomize it and then you can throw it to to roll the dice so that is one way you can roll dice the other way is to use this little bit of a cleaner automated dice roller and these are in various key locations around the board uh, that uh, makes it easy to roll dice so you don't have to go looking for physical dice uh, this is something that uh, Dan Real managed to include uh, in the module in the base module so you will find these here and it's a matter of just clicking the number of times of the amount of dice that you want so here we can click three times and pull up three dice and that will automatically shuffle and roll them for us and then it'll throw the result in chat in this case here we've got a total of 10 and then those dice will disappear on their own after that. You don't have to do any cleanup. Uh, nothing untidy. It's not going to bounce or around the place. It's not going to fall off the edge of the game board. Uh, very, very simple. Very, very clean. Um, and they're in key areas where you normally have to look at something and roll some dice correspondingly. So whether it be to do for a war combat roll or if you're rolling for knights or anything else down here or, of course, as the uh, HRAO, rolling for the destruction of enemy leaders or repopulating Rome or, you know, putting destroyed concessions back into the forum. Uh, there's the dice roll mechanic in the Curia, which is good. Tea break. Hopefully my voice doesn't get too monotonous during this guide, uh, but of course you can always pause and come back if you're watching this on YouTube in the future. <laughs> uh, rest your ears. Um, so now we've learned about dice roll mechanics, which is really good. Outside of that, some of the other physical things we need to always be aware of on the board in terms of the Republic of Rome board game itself, the treasury. Uh, now, the treasury in the actual board game is used using three different independent tokens using your decimal places, your hundreds, your tens, and your ones on a essentially like a slider. Uh, here, we just simply use, uh, I guess, kind of like a fixed token. Uh, now, this can be adjusted, um, you know, with fine granularity by left and right clicking. Um, but of course, if you hover over it and you see that little box there, you can actually type in a value as well. When you move the cursor away, it'll take on that value. So uh, very, very quick way to update the state treasury, uh, either left click or right click or just simply typing over the top um, is, is great. Uh, same for the unrest, another fixed token here, uh, adjusting by left and right click. Of course, uh, unrest can't go below zero, so you can't click below, but you can certainly increase that. Uh, high and hopefully you'd never get to numbers over 10 you're in pretty pretty serious shape if you're getting uh, such a high unrest level so uh, they're uh, key factors to, to think about as well from here I think we might uh, look a little bit at some of the other parts of the board and then we'll have a look at some of the tokens so at the center of the um, I guess or a part of the board um, the statistical and the physical board of the Republic of Rome board game is the forum area. And the forum is pretty much your ad hoc area where everything goes. So whether it be new senators or concessions or provinces, uh, they all sit in the forum ready for the Senate to vote on. Essentially anything in the forum, the Senate collectively, the players, have to, will some point put a proposal forwards to vote and action those things. So, um, you know, if, if we take one of our province cards, you know, that'll be a province that we might need to vote on or there might be a, a senator uh, that needs, you know, is up for persuasion, you know, during the forum phase. Uh, you know, event cards we might put up here to remind ourselves of what's going on and anything else. For example, Tabletop Simulator allows you to do these things with notes. Um, so I've put some notes down for my players to consider as when they're, when they're presiding magistrates. So uh, this is our open area for um, all the cards, like the forum on the actual physical board game as well. <laughs> We've even got a calculator for those who want to calculate in-game. Um, again, another tabletop simulator feature. Uh, again, fantastic. Uh, that Something you otherwise can't do in Roll20. Uh, other parts, uh, we've got a section for laws. So there are law cards in the board game. Um, cards that essentially you can draw and play during the course in the Senate that will vote on. Those law cards will be placed here. 
Uh, the Curia, we've talked about briefly already, and essentially this is the actual the extract from the board itself that the cars would sit on, but we've got a little bit more of an open area to play with here. So, of course, enemy leaders without a war card or that get uh, uh, upset during a war, they lose in a war, um, and, of course, destroyed concessions and senators go into the Curia as well. Active wars and imminent wars and inactive wars boxes. So, again, these are all uh, larger blown-up portions of what you'd see on the physical board uh from the board game itself so uh, all of our active wars will sit here and this is good because this actually gives us space to put all of our legions with those active wars as well when we have made the decision as a senate to deploy those forces and any, any imminent wars will sit here and same as for inactive wars and i've put some prompters here on the scrolls just to remind us on what different types of war cards are you know you've got revolts you've got active wars and prosecuted wars imminent wars etc those aren't in necessarily in the base module uh for uh that you'll download from Steam. This is something that uh, we've added post, um, but certainly not compulsory for the game by any means. Uh, the other factor that we've uh, added post as well is, is this map. Now you can see it's mostly in black. So there's a bit of a reveal feature. So as the Senate conquers new land, they win wars, they gain provinces. Uh, those provinces can be revealed on our map. And certainly for us, that's a fairly simple process. So we would grab our eraser and let's say we uh, yeah, conquered uh, Sicily. We could just click in uh, in this zone if it'll let me do it. Well, in this case, we're going to get the province of Corsica et Sardinia. So if we would won a war recently that gives that province, we can then reveal it. Uh, and that is a feature that, that we've added in our Nova Roma uh, customized variant of this module as, as well. And I think some of the players enjoy that feature, being able to see the map and particularly being able to see the map expand as the Republic grows through the course of of the game that also gives you the ability if you want to deploy governors onto a physical map away from the play area as well you can do that uh, but the players also have a choice if they want to keep things closer to home you can see this ring around the outside here and this ring actually plays a role um, to really signify that when you have your senator card so if we bring our selecting and let's pull a few senators out here so let's say the red faction has three senators. If one of those senators leaves Rome in the course of their duties, either be it on war or as a governor, you can actually just simply pick them up and move them outside of this ring. And that ring can show uh, that they are away from Rome. And that's a prompt of both the player and everybody else um, that you do, in fact, have senators away from Rome. So I guess this ring is almost signifying the, I think it's the Pomerium, if I get that pronunciation right, about, around ancient Rome. Uh, and uh, what was considered the legal boundary of Rome. So, you know, make sure you drop your uh, uh, legions off at the door, you know, disarm before you enter Rome, as, uh, unlike uh, the, the famous crossing of the Rubicon, etc. cetera. Uh, right, so that is certainly one way to show senators outside of Rome. The other is, of course, you can physically deploy uh, senators elsewhere. And I've got some other tokens that can assist with that if you're using the map to deploy senators. Uh, I like this little feature in the middle here. This this come with uh, Dan Reel's team's base module. So this can keep track of what turn you're up to and what phase you're up to as well. So this shows all seven phases in a particular turn. Uh, as you click through, when you finish the seven phases, then it ticks over to turn two, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I really like that uh, that little feature. That's, that's fantastic um, as a good reminder. Right, let's start going through some of the other tokens, uh, I think. Uh, cards, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. These will all be set up for you by uh, myself as the game host. But you can see we've got all three decks here. Um, Middle Republic, Late Republic, uh, the Early Republic in the white. And then, we, of course, we've got the Orange Civil War deck, which is an uh, uh, a customised deck that was added by the Republic of Rome community, which is accessible via the Board Game Geek website. Uh, some of the artwork, uh, I think I did up some of the artwork for, for this deck here, but based off the, the stats of of, uh, of another user. Uh, so yeah, cards are pretty self-explanatory. Look, playing with cards is like any other token, really. Uh, if you've got a, a, a whole stack of cards and you want to move a whole stack of cards, left-clicking will pick up the entire stack and allow you to move that around. Uh, if you then shake that deck of cards, it'll shuffle them, uh, which is quite handy. Now, players themselves won't necessarily need to shuffle cards, but um, uh, that it's, it's certainly good to know. Now, if you just want to take one card off a deck, which is normally what the players are doing, um, let's say they've got the, the, the deck of cards over here in the draw pile. It's a click, uh, yeah, left click, um, and a quick click, left click and drag. Sorry, is, is the better way to announce that. So 
a quick click and drag will bring off a single card. If you're too slow, it'll take the whole deck, but that's easily reset, right? So again, a quick click and drag, bang, will we'll bring a card off. Uh, and then, of course, to flip it over, and this is the other feature that players should know about, is the F key. Uh, the F key will flip over a token or a card. Uh, so that's the same as if it's in your hand. So down here, our, our card in our hand, if we press the F key, it'll flip it over. But again, if it's in your hand, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's uh, right way up. Um, and it's, a, it's the same for tokens. And in fact, that can be demonstrated here on the land bill section. So when a Senate, when the Senate puts a land bill into effect, depending on the type, we can hover over the type and press F, and then we can show the face upside, and that pretty much goes, right, we've got this type of land bill. So that's done with the F key, nice and simple. So no need to click at all, it's just simply hovering over it and pressing the F key. And that goes for pretty much for any other token, really, uh, is just hovering over a token will allow you to simply flip it over without even having to pick it up. So nice and, and simple. So yeah, cards, really easy. In fact, some places have card snap points. So you can actually see a little shadow that are features in some of these zones, which allows you to cleanly place cards into these areas, um, keeps it nice and tidy automatically, which is again, another feature that Dan Real and his team put into the module. I love it. It keeps, keeps the game field nice and tidy. Uh, and of course, we can then all stack all the cards back up again uh, when we are finished. Good. All right, I keep talking about going to tokens. Let's do that now. So let's start. Look, no, no particular order. We're going to start on the left-hand side and work our way across. Most of the tokens we're using are in this middle area here, uh, all nicely laid out, ready for us. Uh, some of these tokens, as I said, are native to the original physical board game. Uh, so you'll see a lot of things that you're familiar with if you've seen or played around with the physical board game. Other tokens are new, and I guess I'll, I'll let you know what are new and what purpose they serve um, during the course of the game. <laughs> yes, uh, Unknown Star, one of our players in chat, has said we're coming up to his favourite section. Um, uh, one of our key uh, assassinators. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're nearly there. So starting over here, so these three tokens are all native to the board. Console for Life token, uh, not used very often. If you're getting to using the, the Console for Life token, chances are you're near the end of the game. Uh, and the same for the Rebel tokens. That's that's quite end game. You you wouldn't see those very often in the early Republic, and potentially not really much in the middle Republic. But um, those tokens are there and accessible, ready uh, ready to use to place onto uh, a senator um, should the time come. So uh, and as you can actually see, the mechanic allows you to pick that up uh, and move the card around as well as the token. So. You know, there's a little bit of a center of gravity thing. I think if you were to put it off to the side a bit and pick it up, it wouldn't pick up the whole token, but get enough of the token on the card and the whole thing can be picked up and moved, which is uh, which is nice and clean. Uh, now, another feature, which I, again, I love about Tabletop Simulator and that Dan Real and the team have really taken advantage of, uh, what we call uh, token bags or infinite bags, and they can be disguised as tokens. So... There are the minor rebel tokens here, which takes this form here. And when you actually hover over it, it actually gives us this infinity symbol, which means there's an infinite amount of these tokens in the bag for use. And it actually even explains to us what it is. In fact, nearly all the tokens, if you hover over them, it tells you what the token is and what it's used for. So even if uh, somebody is not explaining it to you, you can hover over it and see for yourself what the token is for. In this case here, another quick click and drag, we can pull out one of the minor rebel tokens from this infinite bag. And when we're finished with it, we can simply hover over the bag again, let it drop, and it'll put it back in that bag for us. So a good a good rule of thumb is never to delete a token in one of these games. Sometimes the permissions won't let you anyway, but always a good rule is don't delete, um, particularly when it comes to limited uh, token bags like the mortality chit bag yeah you don't want to be deleting those because that'll upset your statistics on uh, potentially senator deaths uh, maybe good for some people <laughs> bad for others um, so yeah keep an eye out for those that infinity symbol when you're hovering over a bag it'll show you that there's an infinite amount of pieces in there ready to go i'm going to come back to this miscellaneous pieces uh section shortly let's go through the other tokens and come back so if you're watching remind me so i don't forget uh now one two three four tokens here these are all uh, not native to the original game. These are all customized, all brought into us um, from Scott Denriel and his team, uh, which helps us with the assassination mechanics in the game. So um, in the assassinations in the game are all quite verbal, uh, requires you to do some uh, physical identification. This just makes it a whole lot easier. Um, one of the things that you find, obviously, when you're playing separated from people and in the virtual environment is it's, you know, there's that, 
added communication barrier because you can't see what people are pointing at as easy or what people are referring to as easy as if it was real, uh, real life. So a lot of the tokens that have been uh, designed or generated in this environment as to help us more easily identify what people are doing or who's doing what or what senators, I guess, are under action in some case. So bring up our example. We'll throw a few more senators back in this area um, for, for knowledge. So there we go. We'll say orange and red team will be in our scenario here. So uh, these four tokens here are all to do with the assassination mechanics. So let's step through them. So obviously the big one here, um, uh, Unknown Star's favorite, is it says Dice Wine, this big, big token here. This is for players to signify that they are undertaking an assassination attempt during the course of the Senate phase. Um, so really it's first in best dressed, kind of as it is in the game anyway. A player will pick this up at their leisure and then they will identify the senator that they wish to assassinate, assassinate, and they will drop that token right over the top of that senator's card. So let's say here that Fulwius from the Orange faction is undertaking the assassination attempt. Uh, Orange, at some point in the Senate phase, of his own accord, will just duck over there, grab that token, and throw that on the card of the senator that he wishes to assassinate. In this case, it's Junius. Uh, and he's going to tell everybody, Radio, dice wine, I'm making an assassination attempt. Straight away, people could hit their space bar, zoom out, and they could look instantly around at all the factions and go, oh, there's the token. Let's zoom in on it. They can, you know, probably M key in this case. They can get a bit of a magnification, but most people will probably hit that mouse wheel and zoom in and see who's being the target of the assassination attempt. So that, that begs then, what are the other three tokens for? So... Um, uh, or I might have lied a little bit here. We have a Tribune token. That's a little bit different, but let's 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 continue with the assassination line for the moment. So we have these two tokens. So at uh, this can be done now or at the at the conclusion of uh, the assassination attempt. This just lets us know um, who has assassinated and who hasn't. So I guess for the Orange team, they would put this token out the front of their faction just to let us know that they are the faction that is doing the assassinating. And when we've finished the assassination uh, calculation process, they can hit that F key, flip it over, and then that signifies then that I have made an assassination this term. I cannot commit another assassination this term because you're only allowed one per faction per Senate phase. The other token here is to show that they can no longer be the target of an assassination this turn, and that's what that token is for. So... Once the assassination has been resolved, they'll grab one of those tokens and throw that at the front of their faction. So regardless of the result, they can't be targeted again. So, yep, we've concluded the assassination. Let's say he survived. We can put that token back and then we put these tokens at the front of our faction just to let ourselves know, but all the other factions know we cannot be involved in assassinations in these particular ways anymore. Uh, very good. Uh, all right, so what's this other token then? So this is a, a Tribune uh, token. You can see it's an infinity bag, as are all the others. So if we pull one of these out, essentially what this is is um, a, an indicator of, of a free Tribune, uh, either to put a proposal forwards or potentially a veto. Um, and then I guess the flip side of that is to show that whether you've used it or not. So when would you use this? Uh, so there are some senators out there that actually... Um, uh, allow for a special use of a free tribune per turn. In this case here, this statesman, uh, Marcus Porcius Cato the Elder, um, Senator 22A, so one of the faction cards, uh, statesman, that can be drawn during the course of a game. You can actually see there at the top left, it says one free tribune per turn. So a, a good idea for senators or factions that get one of these senators is to grab one of these tokens and throw that out the front of their faction as well. And that can indicate not only to that faction, but to everyone else to go, there is somebody in this faction that has a free tribune that they get to use. Okay. Um, and whether it's been used or not yet that particular turn. Uh, and again, so it really helps from that standout view, that, that, that higher level view, so you can straight away see statistics about the factions, who or who hasn't done assassinations, who's got tribunes, etc., etc. So it's really good visually to show what's going on. Um, again, they're, they're optional tokens. They're not, they don't need to be used, but it just makes playing in that virtual environment so much easier. <clears throat> so 
that is what each of those tokens are for. And again, when, if we're finished with them, we can take them back to the bag. The shadows are your clue here. You can see that shadow that, that features underneath the token. If you're trying to line it up with somewhere, follow that shadow and then that will help you drop it where you want to drop it. Um, so we can put all these tokens back if we are so finished with them. There we go. Perfect. All right, so we've talked about Console for Life. We've talked about the Rebel tokens and drawing those. Uh, an optional uh, Tribune token to show if you've got a free Tribune in your faction on a turn. And then the three different types of Assassin tokens to help resolve or visualize uh, uh, what's going on pre, middle, and post-assassination attempts. Okay, now we have our mortality bag. So uh, the, the board game itself physically refers to having a bag or a bowl to put all your mortality chits in. We've taken uh, use of the tabletop simulator mechanics to use what is referred to as a bag, um, which is decorated up quite nicely using uh, this this artwork here and the word mortality on it. So whenever there's a requirement to draw mortality chits, uh, any player can, can come along. And again, that quick click and drag in one motion uh, will pull out a, a mortality token. And you can see we've got those snap grids all ready for us, lined up to make things nice and easy for us. And you can draw out as many, any number of those that you need to as called on by the rules. You know, in a mortality phase, depending on the variant of rule that you're using, it might only be one or two of the mortality chits. If it is testing for commander death during a combat phase after the loss of many legions, you may need to draw in a few more of them. And, and these are randomized. So when they're put in the bag, it is a random draw that they're pulled out. Uh, and then when you're finished, you can pick them all up, hover over that bag, and they'll all go back in again when we're finished. So that's our mortality chit or death chit bag. Uh, nice, and easy to use, nice and easy to use that quick click and drag. Tea break. Ah, fantastic. All right. Let's move on to what essentially seems like a whole bunch of nominee tokens. <clears throat> Again, this is another uh, feature to help us visually in the virtual environment uh, where it's sometimes difficult to see who uh, is talking about, you know, nominations generally for various proposals. So these will often be used by presiding magistrates during the Senate phase to identify people that they're nominating for particular offices, be it a pair of consoles, be it a new sensor, or perhaps it might be for a land bill and identifying who the sponsor and co-sponsor are. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, let's, you know, you, the, the color coding, I guess, is really up to the players. You know, you could say that uh, if the presiding magistrate is the red player, then they would use the red nomination tokens to indicate who their nominees are. And subsequently, the presiding magistrates may also allow for uh, players to indicate who they might want to put forwards as a candidate, if so asked by the presiding magistrate, and they can use their own factions tokens to indicate that. So if I, as the red player, say in this case, and look, I guess we can update that to, to make that really easy. So if I'm the red player and I am the presiding magistrate during the Senate phase, and I want to say, right, we will need to nominate the consoles for this coming Senate phase. I nominate Junius and I nominate Fluius here. And, and as you can all see, if you hit your space bar, you can instantly see straight away who the presiding magistrate's nominees are in for that particular proposal. And then the players can either uh, press Alt, bring up the card, or they can magnify and, and see those players that have been put forwards for nomination. Uh, makes things nice and easy. Or subsequently, you know, if I am not the presiding magistrate and uh, and let's say I'm the orange player, uh, and who knows, the presiding magistrate goes, oh, I'm willing to hear ideas. And he can go, well, look, I'd love Aurelius to be nominated. I put out my nominee token, please see. And people can go, all oh, right, orange player has put forward this particular senator for, for candidate. And then all players can consider that and their vote subsequently on that proposal. So I love these nominee tokens. Uh, again, optional, but uh, they are, are a great asset to, for really clearing up uh, and helping people identify uh, who's being put forward as a candidate in various proposals. I talked about the sponsor and co-sponsor for land bills before. Same concept. Uh, helps players to identify uh, who the presiding magistrate is identifying as the sponsor and co-sponsor for land bills. There always has to be one or uh, two of those, um, uh, and they often get perks uh, or anti-perks based on popularity depending on which way the land bill vote is going. So same concept for those there. 
Um, and it can sometimes be helpful to use these ineligible tokens, and that's another infinity bag. So <clears throat> uh, these are often generally pretty helpful if you're considering the sensor nominations. So uh, as you will recall, uh, the prior console marker is how you indicate senators who have served as consul and then who are eligible to be nominated as censor in the subsequent election during the course of the senate phase and these will generally sit on top of a senator card over here but subsequently we can also show who's ineligible say for a censor vote by using these tokens and particularly if you've had a few rounds of censor votes as it can happen sometimes sometimes you can uh, end up uh, cancelling out a few possible potential candidates who otherwise perhaps would have been eligible for censor but if proposals have quashed them as an option then you could use these ineligible markers to now show right they are no longer an option so here are my new options uh, again usable by presiding magistrates and players alike uh, at their discretion another optional token not seen in the physical base game but put in by dan real and his team uh, great feature uh, and easily to move around left click and drag perfect um and that was good. We could see the uh, while we're talking about sensors and corruption and prior console markers. Again, another quick click, left click and drag to get those prior console markers out. Uh, as you can see on the back, it is means eligible for sensor. And next to them is the corruption uh, markers as well. So uh, generally, corruption from concessions is shown on the card itself. So if you have a concession in your faction, it looks like this, and you can see the center corrupt bar, and you can place your senators over the top. Um, prior to any revenue phase and when they take uh, their uh, concession you need to show that minor corruption which is demonstrated like this but you can actually back that up by using a corruption marker in this case here we're on the minor side so you can reaffirm that yes this senator does indeed have a minor corruption or <clears throat> they could have held a major office the previous turn so you could grab one of those markers and flip it to the major side and that will show that this particular person has a major corruption because they probably held an office the previous turn. And again, that's an infinite bag. So if you have lots of uh, corruption in your uh, in your faction, there's certainly always enough tokens going around. And you'll recall at the end of the uh, census presiding uh, session in the Senate phase, those uh, corruption markers can be returned back to the infinity bag uh, once all the uh, corruption has been so cleared by the uh sensor there we go look at us getting through getting through the tokens <clears throat> we've talked about land bills already simply uh pressing f while hovering over those will reveal those at the time they're needed we've talked about treasury tokens so revision left click or right click or simply typing it in over your keyboard our drawer and discard piles here these may look a little bit different in dan reel's uh, base module but again the cards will be uh, here in the same a draw pile and a discard pile unrest again we, like the treasury token we've talked about that and uh, let's talk about this little section here so i guess like the other boxes around we have an active forces box so active forces are those forces that have been raised by the senate but are otherwise not yet deployed um, and, and that will help us to skip across over here uh, to a couple of different boxes here so we have legions veterans legions and fleets so these are all uh, indicators of our forces during the course of the game uh, we have 25 legions in total, so there's a limited number, and we have a bag that holds those 25 legions. Uh, so you'll see it's not an infinity bag subsequently. And we can click and drag and pull the legions out of this bag. So if we, say, raised four legions, we can draw those four legions out, and uh, we've got four legions. Drag a box, left click, pick them up, and then we can bring them over to the active forces box. But you notice that instantly they automatically right of themselves. So we have a fixed... Uh, surface area over here which will keep the formations nice and tidy for us which is really good <laughs> thank you for unknown staff the reminder about the miscellaneous bag we will come back to that <clears throat> so this is where we store active forces now that includes fleets as well and we have the fleet bag over here again a maximum number of 25 uh, we can draw those out while using that quick left click and drag and then we can simply pick them up and, and put them over here and that, that makes them all nice for us as well so it doesn't matter what we do you know, we can end up shaking around, being silly with them. If we place them back down, hopefully it starts to right them. Yeah, there we go. It's starting to make them a bit better. <clears throat> Perfect. Uh, and again, these are flippable as well. So if you have a legion that becomes a veteran during the course of their battles, you can hit that F key to, to make them a veteran. So again, nice and nice and easy. Love it.
active forces. So what's that Veterans Allegiance bag then? So obviously senators, an example over here. So if he was a commander in the course of a battle, um, uh, any other <coughs> outcome except defeat. So let's say he had the Second Legion with him and they were the ones that became veteran. We can pull out the number two, there it is, <clears throat> the number two veteran allegiance marker and throw that on his card to show that the second legion is now uh, loyal to Junius, who was their, his commander or their commander at the time. Uh, excellent. And when you finish with those, they can go straight back in the bag. Tea break. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, let's talk about some of the other tokens that we see over here. Pro console. Uh, these will probably use quite often, particularly if you have a lot of defeats. Again, these sit over your commanders. Uh, and they're likely to be actually still out here. Very rarely, if at all, would you actually see a pro console who's back in Rome. Um, but the pro, pro console indicates uh, that they were an unsuccessful commander. And that usually also automatically is accompanied by a prior console marker when they become pro console too. Uh, and so they're generally probably still out in the field, ready for the Senate to decide what's going to happen. Uh, likewise, if we had a war, uh, do we have an example war card? We do. So if we've got a war over here and we get a naval victory, this is a bad example because it doesn't require an, a naval battle, but we can indicate a naval victory in a war using our naval victory markers. Um, so that naval victory marker is just like the base game, same as all the uh, legion tokens and fleet tokens, just like the base game, but in a virtual form, uh, nice and clean. So what happens if we have a case of a war that is unprosecuted? Essentially, the Senate was either unable to send a force against a war during the course of a combat phase or uh, they persecuted war but didn't have the required minimum fleet support. At the end of that, the war would be considered unprosecuted. And as a reminder to ourselves, particularly when we're doing calculations for unrest or uh, it's mostly for unrest, is uh, we're looking for those unprosecuted markers. Now, again, this is an optional token that was not in the original physical base game, but we like to use, just to really make it obvious for ourselves, which wars are being not being prosecuted in the course of actions. <clears throat> now, something a little bit different. Uh, in the base physical game, there is actually a token which, uh, uh, several different tokens, in fact, which shows an increase in cost for legions of fleet. So usually off the back of an event, um, uh, oh, look, I've got a Steam achievement for something faithful. Maybe I think it's 50 hours of playtime. I think very good. Um, legion or fleet cost um, can change. Now, we can uh, we use uh, this customized token to indicate that because it sits right next to our legions of fleets here. And instead of a, a token that we have to go looking for, we can just simply update this token here. And we can modify the state just by right-clicking on it and then selecting the new state that we need to show. In this case here, we've increased the cost of legions and fleets by 10 talents. And players can do this as well. Simply right-click, uh, hover over state and press the next state that you need. So... Um, it's pretty good here. The states show values of 10 uh, and that's easily reset as well. So that's Legion and Fleet Cost, which is sometimes updated through the course of a game. All right, we've covered off on all those tokens. <clears throat> Finally, over here, uh, we're getting into, uh, mostly it's to do with governors, really, and provinces, except for this deck here. This is our event deck. Um, so all of our event cards that we need are in here. Now, there's actually a search function. I think it's right-click, and you can actually search for particular cards that you need. There it is, um, depending on what you need. Oh, yeah, interesting. I like that. As uh, so well, you can actually type in... Uh, so if we type in ally, it'll actually start bringing them up. That's a great feature, uh, one that I only discovered recently. So all the cards have had some metadata put on them. So instead of having to flick through all the event cards, trying to find the particular event that you need that you draw, you can simply, uh, with the deck, just right-click on the deck and then use that search function, right-click, search, and then uh, bring that search up. Start typing the name of the event that you need. So the refuge card, bang, there it is straight away, and then you can be able to, be able to drag that out. That's, uh, that's a good feature. But that's our event deck for when we need them. The rest is to do with governors. So obviously, we've got our provinces here. That's pretty good. Uh, and then we have some things that help us uh, to identify certain things that are going on with governors. So if we grab another, let's say, this guy over here. So as I said before, unless you're using the deployed map up here, a governor will be shown by being put outside of the semicircle here or the pomerium. <clears throat> In this case here, Fl Flaminius is going to be our... A particular governor and let's say he is the governor of Sicilia or Sicily so sometimes in this form we'll put the province with him or if you're playing 
out in the map, you might actually take both of those things and put them out here in the respective area. Again, that's a choice for players and all the host. Um, but in this particular example, we'll use the semi outside the semicircle. <clears throat> So each governor has a term, a uh, maximum of three, and that's what this uh, token here is for, an infinite bag, quick click, left click and drag. We can put this over our, um, our cardi. Again, use your shadow to line it up nice. And every time we're required to update the term of a governor, we can right click and select the state, and that will show us how long our governor has been the governor of the particular province for. And you'll recall from the rules, once that hits three, the governor has to return to Rome uh, and we'll likely put that province card into the forum so that the Senate knows they need to send a new governor back out uh, for that particular province. And, and subsequently in that example too, uh, when Flaminius returns, uh, if he had actually taken corruption, i.e. taken provincial spoils while out there, um, we, we generally need to indicate um, uh, a couple of different things, uh, either his corruption, so we can use that using a corruption marker, um, and sometimes uh, a governor can't be sent out back against his will. So uh, we, this is a great way of, of indicating that nice and quickly as well. Saying, oh, yes, Flaminius is back in Rome. Oh, he was a returned governor. So that prompts us to think about certain rules or certain activities that may or may not need to occur. Um, so those are, are, again, useful tokens um, in terms of the, the provincial cards as well. Right, we've got through most of the tokens there. That's pretty cool. Let's go back to some of the key office tokens and some of the stuff in the middle here. So these purple tokens should all look familiar uh, to everybody that's played the physical board game. Uh, 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 we've got one of these for each office. It's been laid out quite nicely in this dais. I quite like that. Uh, and subsequently, the absence of one shows you that the office is currently being held. So if uh, Marcus Porticus was Rome consul, you know, we could have a field consul over here with uh, Flaminius, for example, um, and those, again, can be flipped to show you some of the uh, stats on the back of, of those tokens, just like the physical board game tokens as well. But we've got some uh, customized tokens around the outside as well, but I'll just take a quick sip of tea <coughs> and a sneeze. Oh, excuse me. Before we do that, <coughs> have that sip of tea. Brilliant. Uh, so let's talk about now these other customized uh, tokens. So these are ones that were introduced by Dan Reel and his team. Uh, uh, and again, they, they are quality of life tokens. So starting with these ones over here, these are good for the advanced rules. Uh, for those that are using those, we've got the advocate and prosecutor token. Uh, so in the course of trials that are usually run by the censor, um, we need to nominate a prosecutor and an advocate and they are indicated by these tokens, so we don't have to try and remember on the fly who's doing what or who's who. Um, it makes it easier for both the factions themselves and everybody else to indicate who the prosecutor and advocate are. So again, uh, advanced rules for most of those. Um, I think uh, advocate is an advanced rule. Prosecutor, I think, is in, in both, in all forms of the game. On the other side here, sitting next to the Pontifus Maximus token, uh, Pontifus Maximus itself uh, is an advanced rule in its own right, uh, which can be nominated to a, a senator. Um, so we'll bring him over here. There we go. So let's say this guy is in purple faction. He can be nominated as Pontifus Maximus. Now you'll recall for those that are familiar with the Pontifus Maximus rules is they get a free veto per turn. So like the this, this Tribune token over here in the case of this senator, we indicate this free veto from the Pontifus Maximus with this token. So that can sit out the front of the faction to remind both that faction and everyone else that the Pontifus Maximus still has his veto for this turn. And if he goes ahead and uses it, he can press that F key and show, I have now used my once-off Pontifus Maximus veto for this turn. So again, another quality of life token to just to indicate the status of particular things. Uh, these priest tokens are native to the physical board game where the Pontifus Maximus can assign priesthoods uh, to senators of their choosing once per turn. And again, nice and quick, infinite bag, uh, very easily assigned. Uh, the only other token that we can see here is this uh, looks like a, a really thick axe. So those that are not familiar, this is the ancient Roman sign of Imperium. So um, it was to indicate a particular magistrate who held uh, the, the, the not only the judicial powers, I guess, but the, the, fa the powers of office known as Imperium uh, uh, in terms of the old uh, ancient Roman Republic. Called a Fuscus. 
Uh, and this was uh, essentially a bundle of rods. I think it was about 31 different rods bundled together of a particular type of tree. Uh, and of course, there is this axe head. Um, now, this is a sign that we use to show the presiding magistrate uh, in the course of a Senate phase. Uh, or sometimes the HRAO, it can be the same thing. So in this case here, let's say that Aurelius is the presiding magistrate. We can drop that down next to his card and that will then let everybody know if they're looking out from the bird's eye view that, oh, okay, this guy's the presiding magistrate. So obviously Orange Faction has the HRAO. Um, that is based on the purple tokens generally. So in fact, because the Rome console is up here, generally the Rome console generally is going to be the highest ranking available official unless there is a dictator out there. But of course, if the Roman consul dies, then it'll go down the chain as per the rules. Um, but this, I guess, it helps us to indicate who's uh, in charge at the moment. So for example, if uh, the censor becomes presiding magistrate, we might hand that Fuscus off as a presiding magistrate, or you could be strict to only indicating who the HRAO is, again, up to the players to determine that or whoever's hosting the game. Right, <clears throat> again, more great progress. Uh, and then that just leaves these tokens uh, in the actual factions themselves. So let's zoom in and get a closer look. So there's three here. One, there's this big center one here with an infinite bag. Uh, again, this is helpful if you just need to indicate another way of showing something to do with your faction, whether it be something to do with nominations, whether it's something to do with something in the forum going you know i want to make a claim on this card later you know you're trying to communicate with people it's just a free bag of infinite tokens for you to express your will perhaps um an optional token there and when you finish put them straight back in the bag and then there's two other ones here this one's important this is your faction leader marker uh this is used quite often nearly all the time in the game where you'll assign your faction leader to your card and that'll pretty much live on one of your senators the other one here is a, is a votes token, and I love this. This is another great feature um, implemented by Dan Real and his team. It is a not only a way of showing how many votes your faction has at any one time, so you'll update this quite regularly over the course of the game, which is uh, normally based off your oratory plus knights. <coughs> when you go to vote, um, you can actually use these physically to cast your vote. So you can see there's two sections here, the yay and nay section, or guilty or not guilty, if, depending if you're talking about uh, the, the course of a prosecution. When it comes to your faction's turn to vote, you can actually pick that up, announce your vote, and put that in the particular sections, and, and other people who are casting their votes can do the same. And then that makes it really easy then visually for either presiding magistrate or somebody keeping notes to see where all the votes are going. Makes it really, really, really easy. Uh, but those who are fence sitters who want to abstain, if you hit that F key again, guess what? You've got the abstain vote there. Uh, and perhaps it's, sometimes it's good to drag that somewhere else just to show, yes, I have voted and yes, I'm abstaining. So again, lots of options to, to, to play around with. Again, optional. We don't need to use those tokens. You can just verbally announce that. But I really like the fact that you can physically see who's voted, how much they're voting for, in which direction they're voting. Um, really, again, in the virtual environment, uh, helps with communication. So I love those. And you can see those little snap zones. See that little silhouette outline that appears when we get nice and close? A little snap zone to help keep things nice and tidy. Uh, that's great. Uh, uh, over the back here, uh, we see this little faction treasury icon here. Now, each of the factions get to keep a private treasury. Uh, and in this case here, we have this little tiny token here which we can update to show money that we put into or take out of our faction treasury. Now you might ask, oh, hang on a minute, but the other players could probably see that. Aha, well, if we have a look here, I have selected myself as the red player, but you'll notice that this, this same similar token doesn't seem to be in the same spot. It's just a colored square, right? That colored square is actually a little magical square implemented by, by, by Dan Real there, and essentially anything placed on that little colored square disappears and is only visual to the player that owns it. So this is actually a token that can act, I think it's fixed in place, but we can unfix it. And it is hidden. So all other players cannot see your personal faction treasury. It is hidden. All they will see is a red square, if you're the red player. Uh, and that is a nice, tidy way of keeping your faction treasury. So that begs to then about, well, what about money on the senator's cards? And we can use these tokens here. And that is the money marker. So each senator will get one of these little yellow orbs. And this is the way we can indicate personal treasuries 
of each of the senators. Again, updated by left clicking. Um, there we go. Pick that up. Get that in the right order. Get that little square pop up. Left click and change that. And again, nice and tidy to uh, to keep all your money under wraps. Now, for those that like more, want to stay true to the original physical board game, um, the module that we added actually has the physical money uh, tokens again, like the physical board game. So again, players can decide uh, what type of money they want to use, whether it is uh, the physical coins or whether they want to use a nice and tidy money marker system using the faction treasury tokens and then these talent counters, which is which is great. And then that finally begs the question is, well, how do we update the boxes down the bottom? Uh, for those that are so inclined, we use the number markers. So we can uh, uh, nice and instead of having to use like the physical game, different types of physical markers, these are nice and quickly, quickly, quickly added up or clicked on to add up to different values. And you can have one of those for each of your boxes. So one for knights, uh, one for influence and one for popularity. Um, makes things uh, nice and easy. <clears throat> so your, your senator cards will get quite busy with tokens through the course of the game. So, you know, Kato, the elder here, right, he could be a, an ex-console, so you have a prior console marker. He could be another office again. He could be presiding magistrate. He'll have some money on his card. He'll have popularity. He'll have influence. He'll have knights. Um, uh, you know, he could also be a priest, you know, so we can put a priest token on him too. Uh, and then he'll get, potentially get corruption markers. He could become corrupt, and then he could get concessions so uh you'd have to pick up all your tokens and then put them over your concession um and we can there we go um now if you're looking for another way to pick up tokens use your box method there we go pick them all up put that back next to him as well he could also be the faction leader um so <laughs> uh the cards will get quite busy and then of course you know if he becomes governor then you know uh you'll have a province card associated with him as well uh, so again, that's a combination of both native tokens, but also customized tokens that uh, we've uh, introduced uh, in this particular module. Cool. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Um, it's this miscellaneous bag, really, I think. Uh, and thanks for the reminder for those uh, in chat. So again, there's some more optional pieces here to help with quality of life in the virtual environment. Let's pull them out and have a look. So uh, there's uh, different types of aging rules that are out there. There's probably at least three different variants that I'm aware of. For those using what I call the, the uh, Avalon Hill version 2.16 edition of Aging Senators, these markers can be quite useful in indicating uh, that age. So if we have a senator or a statesman here, uh, one way to keep track of their age, if using this particular rule, is to use these special tokens and these are updated by right-clicking and selecting the state. And as you can see, if they age, uh, you can update that by right-clicking it. And when they get to seven, they become, or is it, uh, I think it's eight. There we go, seven, there we go, seven. They become elder, it indicates it with the elder marker, and they can continue to age. Uh, and that is indicated by this marker. It's a, a nice, clean way of uh, indicating age if using the Avalon Hill uh, optional aging senators rule. Um, and so these are bags within bags. So this miscellaneous pieces section here is actually a bag and it contains other pieces um, which you can potentially use in the game as well. So we may or may not in our Nova Roma games use this one depending on the aging uh, rule that we use. And there's another piece that we'll look at shortly for one of the other types of rules. So what's this bag here? This, this next one I pulled out, this is an away from Rome marker. So I mentioned there's two ways of indicating a senator is away from Rome. One is using that semicircle and placing a senator outside of Rome. So in this case here, we can see that uh, uh, Thorinius uh, is in fact away from Rome because he's outside of the circle for the red faction. Another way is you can leave them just where they are. Uh, so in the case that we had Flaminius as a governor of somewhere, um, we can simply place this token over the top of him. And this shows everybody that he is in fact away from Rome. So you don't have to you know, m mess with him or move him around or outside the circle. You can indicate that he is in fact away from Rome with these tokens. Again, another optional piece up to the player's preference, up to the host's preference as to whether they even want to use this method or not. Uh, some like the circle method, others like using this method and then maybe using a deployment on the map. And we've actually got secondary cards here to indicate uh, a deployed or away from Rome version of the same senators. So for every senator on the in the Senate, there is an equal equivalent card out here. So there is a Flaminius card somewhere in here. I won't go searching for him now. But, you know, let's say that's Flaminius. 
we can deploy him out here. So you can see, right, he's away from Rome. So if he's not in the active wars box, he's obviously a gunner, governor and he's out there in, in the field. So again, another way to change or, or, or track how you're aging your senators. Now, we've put out another bag here. So this is a, for a different, potentially a different variant of aging senators. So quick left click and drag, we'll pull out a, uh, a different type of age marker. So this one you can also use instead of this one here. This one can be right click and change the state to show the age. And this one actually is really good because it shows how much additional uh, penalty there is on your die roll when calculating the age. Uh, that's obviously the last death piece. I like that. That's a good a good inclusion. So if you're not using this one, uh, you can use. Uh, oh, let's put that back in the bag properly. <laughs> it's not gonna. It's it's gonna make a make a joker of me. There we go. But because it's an infant bag, I'm going to use my special delete powers and, and get rid of that. <laughs> that was funny. Too big to go back in the bag. Um, so, there's, yeah, again, there's two different options for aging senators uh, using this method or this method. Again, preference of players and the host. What else is in our miscellaneous box here? Let's have a look. So let's move that bag out of the way over here. War exhaustion markers. This is another optional rule from, I think it's the Avalon Hills edition, to indicate the age of a war. Left click and drag will bring out the token from this bag. And if we go to our war card, we can indicate the age of a war. Maximum being state six, really. Um, if a war is at age six at the end of the combat phase, you'll lose, uh, as indicated by the game over there, which is, uh, which is good. So this is how you can indicate the age of a war if using the uh, war exhaustion rule. And certainly for the Nova Roma games, we like to use the war exhaustion rule. So where chances are we are using this particular piece. What else we got? Uh, cool. Um, so this one you'll often feature in later games, particularly in the late Republic and onwards. There is a law, I think, that comes out which allows you to use legates. Um, so you'll be, you'll pull this token out, which can help you keep track of your legates uh, around the place. So there's one for each province. Uh, Africa, Aegyptus, uh, Asia. You can see all those there. Um and so there's a, a special bag uh, with a legate for each of those. So that's good. And we've got another optional rule token. So uh, again, from the Avalon Hills edition, and, and certainly for us in Nova Roma's games, we like the option to be able to exile statesmen if they're under prosecution during the course uh, of, a, of a major prosecution in the game. Uh, for left click and drag will bring out the exile token. And if you end up exiling a statesman, for example, uh, Fabius Maximus here, you can indicate that with the exile token. Um, and as you can see, only statesmen before the vote uh, as the prompter there. So another optional bag that can uh, sit out on your field somewhere for, for usage if required. Two other ones to go. First one is the Elder Marker. Ah, yes. So this is for a, the hybrid aging rule. And I think in, I don't think I know. So in the 2022 edition, of our Republic of Rome board game broadcast hosted by Nova Roma and myself. Uh, we use the hybrid rule, and so we'll often use uh, these markers to indicate an elder senator. Um, so that's different from this aging senator's rule from Avalon Hill, uh, but it requires us to indicate an elder senator with these markers. So it's another type of aging senator's rule. Uh, and that is a, a bag ready for use. Let's put some of our legates away. Again, use that shadow to indicate where they're going to fall. That makes things a bit easier. Perfect. Uh, we can put some of the aging senators markers away. Excellent. Uh, one bag left in the miscellaneous pot. And this is actually from the base game. This is a native token. Uh, it is your captive uh, token. So uh, how do you get captives in a game? You get a captive by if the last mortality chit draw during a combat uh, against a war, if the last token drawn matches that of the commander he is considered captive uh, and then subsequently that commander will get the uh, captive uh, marker on his card and essentially it can be a ransom can be paid to free uh, that uh, that senator um, uh, I haven't seen that token very often I'd be interested to hear from people in the comments uh, later on if you've ever had a game where you've had a captured uh, senator um, yeah I'd say pretty pretty rare um, something to calculate the the, the probability of that that would be uh, certainly interesting to see so there's certainly a lot of miscellaneous pieces here but some of those are only come out dependent on the type of rule that you're following or a certain point in the game so uh, a lot of those are for optional rules or Avalon Hill rules that may be brought in so certainly for the Nova Roma games we like to use a variant of aging senators 
Uh, we like to use War Exhaustion and Exile, which are all not in the Valley Games edition of the rules, uh, but do make an interesting addition nonetheless, uh, and we have included those in our games. Um, in terms of uh, this module, let's look at some of the, the module more generally. Look, we've got the rule books out there. So this is obviously the uh, standard rule book, and this is version 1.07, thanks to Alan Richborough and all the good work that he does in updating the living rules. So second edition living rules 1.07. Uh, and then you can simply click on these arrows to flick through the what is the PDF. And as you flip through it, all players see this live, uh, and that also helps us in game to see you know what rules are going on. Uh, we can actually click and pop that out over here as well to make it a bit easier to see. I like that a lot. That's uh, that's very good. And we've actually included the Avalon Hill rules as well, mostly for looking up something like the Aging Senators Rule or War Exhaustion, etc. Uh, they feature in here. But you can actually compare side by side the Avalon Hill rules versus the Valley Games rules. But the 95% the, the of the, the core mechanics that we're following is the 1.07 rules in our Nova Roma games. But there are some people out there that still like to play the Avalon rule, Avalon Hill uh, rules edition, and that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, below that is actually something that we've instigated in our Nova Roma games. These are some cheat sheets, very customized for the games that we play and the pieces that we use. <coughs> um, the, the purple highlighter here is actually things that we often forget uh, in the course of our game. Or well, when I say we, it's usually me as the facilitator has forgotten. Um, and so we've, we've highlighted those for ourselves, but it's prompted us, you know, particularly in green here is the optional rules that we, we use. Um, so there's that aging senators rule from Avalon Hill that I talked about. Um, ironically enough, that's not the rule we're using in the 2022 game that we're playing, but, but there we go. Um, so, so again, that's nice and quick. Instead of having to flick through a bu rule book, I like to have a, a, a cheat sheet um, that uh, we've used in years previous. But next to each of the factions, you can actually see this book down here as well. And this is another quick reference guide for all the phases that uh, was put together by, I think it was, again, Dan Real and his team, just to show, again, what happens in each of the phases, just to prompt the players to show what's going on. Handy little guide again in there as well. And I like this piece. This is great. Again, uh, another great addition by the team. Uh, a little persuasion attempt at calculator. This actually can be picked up uh, and moved around, which is quite good. So players that are considering and making a persuasion attempt, or even for the sake of the calculation live, they can come over here and, and pop in the detail. So, you know, what is the uh, influence of the center in question? You know, what's their oratory? You know, are they going to add any bribes through the course of that? You know, what's the loyalty rating of the target senator? Are they aligned and are they going to throw any counter bribes uh, in and that going around the circle of factions that is? And then that will give you your target dice roll. And as it says there, it's uh, equal to or less than a 2d6 and you're going to get equal to or less than that number. So it's nice to see on the fly getting that calculation done. So beautiful. Love that uh, little set that, that features out here uh, live in live time. Um, thankfully, Dan and his team have also put this little how to use module in fact, actually, that gives us pictures of what the base module looks like when you download it. And you can certainly start to see some of the differences of things that we've added uh, post the download. But if you're looking to use, even know how to use the module, uh, players can come in here and have a flick through this to get an appreciation of how to use the game. And, and most of what I've talked about so far in this guide and this introduction is actually in this book here, which is, which is great. So, for example, here's all the stuff on uh, assassins. Here's all the stuff on you know, all the optional tokens here. That's great. Um, so plenty of, you know, shortcut keys. So you'll see the, the Alt and M keys are on here. <clears throat> how to change your camera view, groupings, magnifications. Um, that can help all the players. Well, how to use the chat function. And there's a bunch of other guides that are around the board as well. So uh, some people are like, ah, but what about some of those statistics from the board that you need to reference? Well, they're still here. Uh, in our version of the game, uh, we've got them around the map. So, for example, the State of the Republic that you need to refer to, the Popular Appeal and the Trial Table. Up here, the Random Events Table, <clears throat> the Combat Results Table, etc. All those tables uh, still feature for us around the outside of the map. And in the Nova Roma games, we've got some of the you know optional trackers here. So a vote tally tracker to show where all the votes are currently sitting in the factions, as well as our influence track, just to give players an appreciation of who's sort of leading the pack at the moment in terms of influence. Um, there we go that is pretty much uh, everything that compulsory you need to talk about you, you've probably spotted the medals up here this is a really really non-canon uh, feature that features in some of the previous Nova Roma games where you can award medals to senator uh, senators if you're interested you can actually look it up on Board Game Geek you can look up honours and awards 
Uh, it's in the uh, file section, I think. Um, you can actually download um, a PDF and you can actually, in this case here, cut them out and uh, you know award medals to your senators. And this PDF explains what each of the medals are for if you're so inclined to use something as non-canon <laughs> as the medals generated here. Uh, there's also some optional tokens here to put in factions to indicate who's holding what office. So there's one for Rome, Field Consul, Pontifex Maximus, you know, one for the Presiding Magistrate, etc. Uh, again, another optional peach, uh, feature that the players and or hosts can decide that they want to use to increase um, their game visually uh, for whatever factor. Then at the very end of the game, when you've got a winner, you can uh, award them one of these crowns or a, a, I guess a corona. So, so for those that take it by force as a rebel, you can award them uh, the Wenny Witty Wiki uh, 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 Corona uh, Award here. So you can throw that down to show that they won as a rebel or subsequently if they run through the more legal route as a, a console for life, you can award them that one at the end. Uh, so players are, are striving for these trophies. Very good. Uh, I think we've pretty much covered nearly the entire board. I'm looking to the chat now to see if there's anything else worth worth talking about. But uh, hopefully by now uh, you are you've 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 seen the module. You understand all the pieces that are out there and have a rough uh, idea of how to not only navigate around the board but interact with the pieces and what a lot of the pieces are for relative to some of the rules that you should hopefully be learning in some of the other guides or even if just reading through the rule book. So quick recaps, you've got your dice rollers, either physical uh, with the dice here, of course, or by clicking on the, on the surface. Treasury and unrest tokens are updated by left clicking and subsequently for the money markers and number markers, left and right click to adjust those or simply hover and type, which is really good. Don't forget your F key to flip over tokens and cards. Um, WASD keys to move around. Space bar to reset your view. Uh, you can actually right click and hold to move and pan your view around as well and mouse wheel to zoom in and out. M key to magnify, alt key to zoom in instantly on a token or that of a card. Uh, and then the rest is all really self-explanatory by hovering over a feature uh, and it'll give you the, not only the title of what it is, but also a brief explanation, be it uh, uh, an ineligibility marker through to you know the Legion bag, uh, uh, through to some of these other pieces up here, etc. So if you hover over the bags themselves, they will tell you what they are and what they're used for. Really, really helpful. Uh, don't forget the search feature, right click and search, or if it's got a different type of status, right click, hover over state, and you can select the different states as well. Uh, cards, hold decks can be picked up and shuffled by holding and shaking, uh, or you can pick up both tokens from bags or cards alike by a quick left click and drag, will pull off a single item. Uh, and you can see those snap zones in certain areas as well, which is also quite helpful. Uh, map can be revealed. <clears throat> there are other physical tokens to help show provincial forces too, which can be quite useful. Uh, or if provinces are being attacked by a war. All sorts of optional uh, tokens that can be considered uh, in the course of a game. It's brilliant. Um, I, I love it. So I, I tell you what, again, I, I, I pass on my thanks to, to, to Dan Real and the team. Yeah, get on there. You can download this on, on the Steam Workshop. So if you've got Tabletop Simulator, once you've purchased that, go to the workshop for the game and uh, look up Republic of Rome. If you just type that in the workshop, it'll, it'll, this will be one of the options that comes up or that URL to uh, my, my virtual left, which way am I pointing this way? There you go. To my virtual left, uh, that, that URL will also take you to this page as well. Um, please subscribe, give it a, a, an award, give it a thumbs up, uh, give it a share. These guys have done some incredible work giving us this visual masterpiece of a Senate, of a forum, uh, really helps you to get into that role-playing element uh, of this game, which is which I think is quite important um, for all of my Nova Roma games. You'll see my senators have to <laughs> have to give speeches, whether it's as a presiding magistrate for the state of the republic, whether it's as a prosecutor, whether it's uh, as a, a censor and announcing the you know the types of prosecutions that you might be undertaking as a turn. Um, it, I, I love that this helps to really really not only help with communication in the virtual environment, but also helps those those role playing uh, aspects. Um, so, so there we go. That is the Republic of Rome board game module for Tabletop Simulator. And this is our default environment now that we host our Nova Roma games on, our Republic of Rome board game broadcast. Um, 
and, and I, I, I've loved interacting with this module. I love playing with this module uh, and I continue to find new ways to, to uh, increase our experience or make things a little bit easier for us. So easy to use, even if uh, you're not particularly computer savvy. Uh, and some of my past and present players can attest to that. They're not overly comfortable on computer, but they've been able to work quite nicely with a uh, tabletop simulator. So it's a great product. Um, so if you are a, a new or an emerging player to the Nova Roma games uh, and you don't have tabletop simulator um, and you're uncomfortable perhaps about purchasing uh, the game, talk to us. There are options for potentially uh, borrowing a, a copy of the game. Um, but look, you know, if you purchase it, then you've got access to hundreds, nearly thousands of different board games. And with other people that have got tabletop simulator, you can be playing uh, virtual tabletop games with their people all across the world, uh, family, friends, you name it. Uh, and certainly the game this year in 2022, we've got uh, people from all over Australia and, and Europe playing simultaneously. And uh, for the most part, it's been working really well, not too much lag, uh, which, is, which is really good. So uh, if you've got any questions after watching this introductory module, get in touch with us personally or feel free to comment on this video on YouTube in the future. Uh, on the Australian Nova Romana channel and uh, we can answer your questions there as well and that'll help everybody else if you've got questions about this module. Um, but again, my final thanks to Dan Reel and, and his team there. They've done an immaculate job with this module and that's inspired us to add all the components that we wanted to add for our specific Nova Roma games that we uh, like to host uh, here on Twitch. Um, yeah, really, really good. Uh, so I think we, yeah, we, we covered everything. We got through all the tokens, uh, cards, navigation. Uh, I think that'll conclude the guide. So uh, well done for getting this far. Uh, well done for getting through the guide. So hopefully by now you are now ready and primed to play in a Republic of Rome board game broadcast with me uh, uh, as, as your host or maybe playing depending on uh, when, we're, when we're playing this in the future. And uh, hopefully this inspires uh, you to uh, not only check out the Republic of Rome uh, module, but get into uh, learning more about Rome. Uh, certainly, get in touch with us. Yeah, Australia Nova Romana. You know, let's let's let, we, we'll talk about Rome stuff all day. We we love it. Uh, well, um, that will sadly conclude uh, our our introduction. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you very much for those who uh, were live uh, during this session as well. Always appreciated, uh, appreciating your support. Uh, and I guess until the next guy, next introduction, or the next game, uh, I bid you a wellette.